Hi, it's Mindy and we're here in my kitchen again and we're going to make some pot roast. So one of the questions that I had was um, in the in the class in the question and answer ses session after the class that I taught on keto um, was what do you do about Sunday dinners with your family? Well, I think it's pretty easy to make those Sunday dinners keto um, or at least to pull a portion out of those Sunday dinners for me that is keto. And today I'm going to do traditional Sunday dinner pot roast. But instead of potatoes and carrots, we're going to use some alternative vegetables that are more keto friendly. But right now I'm going to take you through my process of making um, pot roast. So I have a deep pan. This is what I'm going to roast it in. And I've gotten that oil hot. I'd set it off so that it didn't start smoking while we were talking. And over here I've got, this is a, um, this is actually a sirloin tip. Um, oh no, this one's a round tip roast. I bought the one that's on sale because I'm a bargain shopper. I've got a bunch of kids to feed, and so I buy what I can afford, and this is what I can afford. It was reduced for quick sale. I watch for those things when I'm shopping at the grocery store. In fact, I've even been known to read the dates on the ones that aren't on sale and know when they're going to put them on a markdown so that, you know, because they're trying to hurry up and get rid of them. So that's what I've done here. It was originally $4.48 a pound and I bought it for $3.81 a pound, so that was a good buy. And then it's bound up with this string, which I'm going to cut because I don't really care to keep it rolled up tight. Oh boy, they've, cut, they've done each individual one. I'll cut each one off here. I don't need it to be trussed up for this application. What I do need is I need to cover it with some salt. So this is my ground pink Himalayan salt and um, kosher salt works here um, pretty much um, any kind of salt. Salt is salt guys. But I'm going to get a good coating of salt on the outside of this. I'm going to move that over there and flip this over here and take those off. So the salt is going to help the outside to get a nice seared crust when I put it in the oil to sear it. And I want to make sure I'm getting all these surfaces. And the reason I put my salt in a bowl like that is because I don't want to be rubbing on this meat and then reaching back into my salt container. Okay. So I've got hot olive oil in here. Ooh, I'm sizzling already. And I'm going to put this um, one side down into the hot oil. Make my fingers are about three in a straw over there. And you want your heat to be really nice and high. Because if you don't have your heat very high, you're going to end up boiling this roast instead of browning it. And yes, the meat does turn brown as it cooks. But we don't just want it brown. We don't just want it turn the grayish brown that it turns just because the meat is cooking. We want a nice sear on the outside. So I'm turn that fire up and let it get nice and hot. Alright. So while that's browning, I'm going to walk you through what I'm going to put in there next. So after the meat is, is brown, I'm going to turn it to all sides, and um, once all sides are brown, now the idea is not to cook it, it's just to get some flavor, some caramelization developed on the outside of the roast. That's the whole idea with doing this browning step first. Um, and um, what I'm going to, I'm going to just brown the outside, and then I'll set it out onto a plate before I'm ready to put it into the oven. And in where I've cooked that, I'm going to cook, I've got some celery and onion that I've cut up here. This is about a half of a yellow onion and about four um, ribs of celery there. So after I'm done browning the meat, I'm going to cook my onion in the hot oil where I cook the meat. And then to that, I'm going to add some garlic. And remember my trick about garlic that I freeze the whole cloves and then it's easy to peel later. So those were frozen and then peeled and I've got my garlic press here to do that. 
once my um, once my veggies are cooked and I've added my garlic, I'm going to add uh, some dry red wine. Now this is about the cheapest red wine I can find. It's about two eighty eight, two dollars and eighty eight cents for a bottle. Um, you don't need the expensive stuff for cooking. You just need it to be dry red. If you don't use wine, you could use a little beef broth or chicken broth um, or stock in um, in place of it. The idea is that you just want to deglaze the pan. I do want to talk a minute about using red wine with beef. Um, yes, wine is carby, but if I were, uh, in my recipe for this, I have a half a cup of red wine. That's because usually people are cooking a lot smaller roast than I'm going to cook for my family of six here. Um, but because I'm doing like a double batch, then I'm, uh, I'm using a whole cup of red wine. But there's something about the flavors that we sense on our tongue, that there are certain flavors that are soluble in fat, which, you know, we know that on keto because fat tastes good, right? It makes everything else taste good. There are certain flavors that are soluble in water, and then there are flavors that are soluble in alcohol. And so by adding a little bit of alcohol to what we're cooking, it brings out different flavors than what we've, we've tasted before, and it makes it taste more well-rounded. But you don't have to use it if you don't want to. If you're wanting to keep your carb count even lower, then leave it out. You can use the beef broth instead. So you use a combination of beef, beef broth and chicken broth for braising. It's entirely up to you. But I like red wine with my beef, so that's what I do. It also adds a nice color to our vegetables we're going to add later, and you'll see that too. So I smell that this is getting close to being ready to turn, and I can see that it's starting to brown. I'm going to lift it up. Right there. That's what the salt does to it. Um, that lets it caramelize really nicely on the outside. Now this is a round roast, and round roast is a little more, um, it's a little bit more lean than like a chuck. So chuck for, um, for keto would be ideal. That would be the ideal roast. Okay, so back to my ingredients over here. So after I have added the celery and the onions and the garlic and then the red wine, I'm going to add some more flavoring to it. So what's going to go in there next is going to be um, my, my roast, of course, but then I'm going to add some bay leaves, which again, I'm a cheapskate, so this is a container that I saved and I buy my bay leaves in bulk and just refill my container. So bay leaves, um, give it some good flavor. Here is another big secret weapon for flavor. This is a bundle of thyme, and it's fresh thyme. And I have never used fresh thyme before, but I've just tied it with a piece of string, like a piece of, uh, of thread. And believe it or not, those strings will all hold together while it's cooking, and all these little leaves will fall off, and they'll be all over inside of there, and then you just pull the stem right back out. Um, I'm also going to add some crushed red pepper. You're welcome to use some black pepper if you want. And then um, I've already got the salt in there, but I definitely will be salting my um, onions and my celery. Then once that's all in there, and I'm going to add some chicken broth, which I have some chicken stock that I made from scratch over here. This is basically bone broth. Once I, I add that to the roast, um, then it will go in the oven, and I'll cook it until it is falling apart tender. It's going to take about four hours for it all to cook. And when that is all cooked, then um, I will cut up some of my keto-friendly veggies and add to it, and along with some butter, and we'll roast it for another 30 to 45 minutes until those veggies are tender. So you'll see the whole process. I just I wanted to walk you through the steps while this is cooking. And this looks like it's doing pretty good. Um, looks like I'm probably ready to pull this out. So I'm going to see if I can do that without burning myself. So the peppers and onions went in here. Or not onions, not peppers, sorry. Celery and onions went in here. And we're going to 
cook those, we want to get, now remember we caramelized that, that roast really brown. We want to get that same caramelization on these veggies here because that adds lots and lots and lots of flavor. Could you throw all of this in a crock pot and just leave it all day? Absolutely. You can do that if you want to. You don't have to go through all of these steps, but you will not believe the difference in the way this tastes. And, you know, um, we have church on Sunday morning, so this is something that you could get up and do before church. Put it on and let it, um, you know, let it simmer while you're gone or let it, let it cook in your oven while you're gone to church. Come home, um, cut up your keto-friendly veggies, and, um, and in 30 to 45 minutes you would have dinner. You'd have your family dinner. So, now I'm going to go ahead and salt And the celery and onions just give a whole lot of flavor to this. I'm not worried about adding too much salt because I'm going to add my chicken broth. My, my chicken stock has not been salted. I did not salt it. And I usually do not salt it when I'm cooking because that way I can adjust the salt a lot better. Or I can even use the broth to dilute down if I add too much salt. So I want to let this cook for a while and get lots of color in it. Again, we don't want it to boil in that oil. We want it to sear. And, you know, yeah, I could have taken out, I could have dumped out this oil, but on keto we want the fat, right? So that's nice olive oil. Let's leave it in there and add more depth of flavor to our pot roast. Now these veggies are not really in here to be vegetables. Um, they are in here for adding flavor to our pot roast. That's what they're there for. You're gonna get fog all over the camera, Corin. <laughs> He's having fun. He's trying to see if the camera can smell this cooking because it smells amazing. And see, I've broken up all those little things that were stuck on the bottom have all come off onto my veggie peas. We just kind of want those to start getting some color on them and start getting soft. Burning on my burner, so I've got some smoke coming up there. 
That's all right. It's not going to hurt on the inside. So I'm going to turn my fire down just a little tiny bit because I don't want to um, I don't want to burn this garlic going in because I don't want it to taste bitter. That's why I didn't put the garlic in at the beginning, because I didn't want it to burn, because it does burn more quickly than everything else will. So the garlic goes in. Gorgeous. And then I'm going to shake a little crushed red pepper into here. And like I said, feel free to use black pepper or cayenne pepper or whatever strikes your fancy. I'm just a big fan of either cayenne or crushed red. And then my wine goes in. And use the wine to kind of break up anything that might have burned, well not burned, but browned on the bottom right there. So we want to get all those browned bits. All right, now my roast is going to go back in. I moved the veggies a little bit to the side. Okay, my thyme bundle. few bay leaves. Okay, and then my chicken stock goes over the whole thing. That is a quart of chicken stock, by the way. So the, the pan that, that goes on here, the lid that goes on this pan, it has a broken lid because it's 25 years old. I've had it since I got married. Um, so the lid's going to go on that. And I have, so what I've got in there is I seared the roast and then I cooked my uh, veggies for, for the flavor. Um, we cooked some celery, some onion, some garlic. There's a thyme bundle in there. There's also some bay leaves and red wine and chicken stock. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is taste. Because I want to make sure that I have strong enough salt flavor in my broth that's around it. Because if I don't have strong enough salt flavor, my roast is not going to taste salty. That's good. That's good. I think it'll do. So I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to put it in my oven. I've got my oven set at 325 and we'll let it cook between 300 and 325 for, um, it'll be about four hours, but um, check your weight of your piece of meat and then look up how long to cook it till well done. But basically I just cook it till it's falling apart tender. You want it to be able to be cut with a butter knife. So we're gonna pause the video and then I'll come back when it's done and I'll show you how to cook these veggies in with it. Thank you. Hi, we're back. Um, it's been several hours, watched a movie with my family, let my roast cook, and I'm getting ready to get out of the oven to check to see if it's done. Beautiful. Let me grab a fork so I can test the tenderness of it. I can tell you already it's about to fall apart though. Yeah, look at that. So it's perfect. And then I've got all this gorgeous sauce down in here. Now those vegetables that are, let's pull this thyme bundle out. Um, those vegetables that are down in there, um, they are they're good for flavoring, and if you kind of wanted to thicken up that sauce a little bit, you could take this meat out. Of course, it's going to fall apart when you try to take it out, but you could take it out if you wanted to, and um, you could put a stick blender to it and make it a little thicker, so make it more like a gravy. 
but I don't ever feel like I need to do that. I'm going to fish around down in here and try to find my bay leaves and get those out of there. Oh, I see one. Don't know where it went. Do you see where it went, Corin? There it is. Yeah, I found it. How many did I put in here? Do you want to go for a ride at all? I'm filming. My uh, my 20 year old son just got a new car and he's wanting to take mom for a ride, which I would love to go on, but I want to finish making this for you guys. There's two. I don't remember that I put two or three. You're only supposed to count those things. Why didn't you guys help me keep count? Yeah, we got a house full of boys here. We've got three sons living here. My daughter lives just right down the road. Maybe I only put two bay leaves in there. Well, if, if not, we'll find it later, won't we? Oh, told you that was going to fall apart. Okay, so now I'm going to taste my broth here. <clears throat> mm. That's everything that it should be. Didn't need any more salt, I can tell you that. <clears throat> kind of sucked that down my throat. I'm also going to taste of my meat just a little bit here. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so I told you that I would add some keto-friendly vegetables to this. And you could completely and totally add broccoli, cauliflower, and those kinds of things that we're used to eating on keto, if you wanted. But I thought since we're, it's the first day of fall, that I would add some fall-type vegetables, fall and winter vegetables to this, and we could roast it in the oven. So I have a head of cabbage here. And I have cut it in half and then um, cut that half in half again. Cut the core out, which I'm going to show you how to do, how to do that with this other half. And cut the core out and um, make a mark where that center point is. Um, and then I've cut it up into slices. So just use your knife and cut that down through there. And then there's the core right there. So I'm just going to take that pull that core out just like that <clears throat> and my son will eat that later because that's his favorite part <clears throat> and then I just will cut that into wedges I don't want to do that and cut myself the reason keep your fingers back out of the way guys Okay, so now I'm going to add this in here with this broth. And I think that I'm actually going to lift that roast out of there, even though I know it's going to start falling apart on me. Because if I put this back in the oven the way that it is, I'm going to end up losing. I'm not going to end up with room, and it's going to end up even cooking down more. So I'm going to pull that out of there. I'll add it back in a little while. That I have is I have four turnips here and I didn't peel them you could peel them if you wanted to but I don't feel like it's ever necessary to peel turnips and I'm just going to add those in here too so turnips roast up nicely and they're a lower carb veggie and then um, I've got my cabbage wedges to go in here too and I'm going to do a whole head of cabbage because like I said I have a big roast and I have a big family but you don't have to do a whole head of cabbage if you want to do less than that that's totally fine So I'm going to add all that into there. And then, this is my secret weapon right here. 
this is a whole stick of butter. It's going to go in there with my cabbage. And when I put that in the oven, that butter is going to really um, caramelize. And we're going to have like a brown butter, butter flavor with that. And that's really delicious with the cabbage. <clears throat> I started doing that a long time ago, even before I was keto, when I would make corned beef and cabbage. I have an Irish heritage, and so when I would make corned beef and cabbage for um, St. Patrick's Day, um, I started using butter in my corned beef and cabbage. And yes, corned beef does have a lot of fat, but um, I don't like the flavor of corned beef fat. I like other types of fat, but I don't like the flavor of corned beef fat. So what I do with corned beef is I will cook it and then I will let it the um, fat in it solidify on the top. I'll usually either use ice or put it in the refrigerator or something like that and pull off some of that fat. And then I will replace that with butter when I add my cabbage to it. So that's just kind of a trick that I do because that butter, that creamy sweet flavor of the butter is really good with the cabbage and the, and the saltiness of the corned beef. And so that's kind of the same flavor profile I'm going on here, only it's a roast beef with that. So the turnip should turn nice and sweet in the oven and the cabbage should cook nicely and we'll come back and get to it in a minute. Thanks. Hi, it's been about 45 minutes, maybe closer to an hour, actually, since I put the um, pan back in the oven with the cabbage and the turnips and my hair is all messy and windblown from the Missouri humidity because I got to go on a ride, on a ride with my son in his convertible while I was waiting on this to get done. Um, got to look up at the stars with the top down and it kind of blew my hair a little bit. But anyway, I wanted to show you all what the vegetables look like. So this is the cabbage up on top. Beautiful brown going on as I stir down underneath. I've got those turnips. Now I just checked one of these turnips and they're not maybe quite as done as you might like them, but I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat them. Um, but they are like a, a kind of a, well, they're, they're, they're done. They're just not mushy like you would expect them to be. And then you can see that shiny all on that cabbage. That's because all that butter, um, oh, <laughs> my son's trying to steal a turnip here. All that butter that I put in there, it absorbed into the cabbage. So um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the meat back in here. And I'm going to ladle some of this juice right over the top of it. So because it, it dried out just a little bit while I was waiting on that to cook, I should have wrapped it. But you could totally push that down in there and put those vegetables on top of that. And then I'm going to fix myself a bowl of it. Somebody snitched a piece right here already. I think that might have been my 11 year old that did that. Oh, my 15 year old just admitted to it. Corin says it was me, it was me, it was me, mom. So remember not a huge serving of protein, um, about the size of a deck of playing cards. And then I'm gonna get down in here and get some of these flavorful vegetables that we cooked way earlier, some of that celery and onion and so forth. And remember, it kind of almost completely disappears, but there's lots of flavors down in there. Oh yeah, there's some of it. And some more cabbage. I love cooked cabbage. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, i got to find me a fork. Okay, so here we go. Here's the taste test. You gotta see how this goes. Hmm. Very nice. I like it. Let's get some of the meat with it too. So if you want your vegetables a little more done than that, it's perfectly fine to cook them longer. Get them cooked too long though, they start mushing out and falling apart. I'm going to keep eating because this is really good. So thank you all for joining me in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed my recipe. Just a simple pot roast with vegetables. You could add um, whatever types of vegetables that you might want. You could do cabbage or do broccoli and cauliflower if you want them. Mushrooms are great in this with a little bit of like bell pepper and onion. Um, 
you don't have to do the cabbage and turnips if you're not keen on cabbage and turnips but boy it's a nice winter vegetable and I love it so I wanted to show you guys how to do it and it looks like a tr traditional pot roast so that's a good thing so thank you guys for joining me in my kitchen and keto on